Please turn your Bibles, if you will. I am going to make your Bible work today, so you need your Bible. I would encourage you to take notes today because it's important for you to remember what you're about to hear, but also for you to teach it to your friends and family and your children and nieces and nephews that they may understand. And most of all, the teacher to the world that you work in. A topic that I hope will make sense to you for the first time in a deep way. I want to talk about the birth and the death of death. The birth and the death of death. Death was given birth and death was killed. I'm going to be focusing on the king that came to accomplish that. And he did it to redeem kings. Let me begin with a statement about our faith. Of all the religions in the world, and there are four major religions in the world, there are many other smaller ones, but the big ones that we hopefully are well acquainted with. Of all the religions in the world, including Islam, Hinduism, and Buddhism, Christianity is the only faith in which the founder personally died for the followers. It is the only faith on planet Earth where the founder of that faith died for the followers. That is very important. That distinguishes the Christian faith from every other so-called religion. Buddha did not die for the Buddhist. Muhammad did not die for the Muslim. Confucius did not die for the Confucianisms, whatever they are. And Maharaj did not die for the Hindus. They wrote good books, they wrote wise sayings, they established different systems of traditions that they left the people to follow. They gave them all kinds of acts to perform but none of them died for their followers so don't you ever compare the Christian faith with those religions we are not in their class and secondly no other faith on earth promises the cleansing of personal and corporate sin through the personal sacrifice of its founder. None. Muhammad never claims that his death and his blood would forgive the sins of the Muslim. Buddha never once suggested that his life, as pure as he claimed it was, could in any way affect the personal and corporate sins of the Buddhist. Never did he suggest such a thing. And no guru or Maharaja has ever claimed that their life and their purity, including the one who's alive today, that their life could forgive and cleanse the sins of their followers. Only this Christ faith. Jesus said, I lay my life down to atone for many. In other words, I am going to die to cleanse 
the people who follow me. No other faith claims that. You know, I believe it is safe to be in the Christian faith. Let me tell you why. If I was a Buddhist, I would have good scripture from the writings of Buddha. And I would be able to learn a lot of wisdom. But there would be no guarantee that my sins were taken care of. As a Muslim, I would know the Quran. I would study the great writings of Muhammad. I would fast. I would visit Mecca. And I would go through the different traditions of Islam every year. But there would be no guarantee that my sin problem was solved. You shouldn't get caught dead without knowing your sins were solved. I don't want to be faithful and committed to a religion if it doesn't solve my sin consciousness. That's why this faith is in a class all by itself. What other founder of any religion ever said this? Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. No other. The Christian faith is built on the incarnation and the life the death, the burial, the resurrection, and the expected return of its founder. It's the only faith that is built on the life, the birth, the death, and the resurrection of its founder. Every other religion is built on the founder claiming he got some prophecy or some revelation. But this is the only faith where the life of the founder is the foundation of the faith. No other founder of any religion ever commanded their followers to follow them. Come on, y'all are smart people. Think about this. Muhammad never demanded that Muslims follow him. He told them to submit to God. Matter of fact, that's what Islam means. The word Islam means submission. No Hindu has ever been commanded by any Maharaj to follow him. They would say, follow the wise teachings, but not me. Buddha never demanded a Buddhist to follow in his footsteps and be like him. He said, follow these nice sayings. But Jesus, in a class all by himself, said if any man will come after me he must what deny himself and decide to die to himself and follow me then he says for he that have me have life now what kind of demand is that and then he says he that does not have me does not know life how dare he Jesus never told you to go after God. He commanded you to come after him. Hallelujah. What a faith. What a faith. I tell you, this man whose life and death and incarnation resurrection is the foundation of this faith I still got a problem with a question that others have a problem with my problem is solved of course but here's the question the question is why did he have to die this is a very important question 
Let me tell you why it's an important question. Because you are intelligent people. And the millions watching me right now around the world on television networks and on TBN and on Cornerstone and throughout South Africa and throughout the northern part of Africa, where we're reaching millions this, this day. We, we are struggling with this question. Why is this an important, important question? It's an important question because it's a logical question. Why does this man have to die to redeem humanity? Let me tell you why it's an important question. Because God created the whole universe. God is powerful. God produced what the scientists have discovered recently. They've now discovered that there are over 500 million galaxies. Then they've discovered that there are possibly other universities or universes. They've lost the ability to count the planets and the stars. And the Bible says all of that was created by God. How can a God who made 500 million galaxies and keep them all running without clashing into each other cannot save a few puny human beings without killing a man. Why couldn't God just snap his finger? We are redeemed. After all, he holds the stars, the Bible said, between his little finger and his thumb. Could you imagine the universe is in God's palm and our scientists' telescopes still can't measure it? What a big hand. Don't let God slap you. This is a logical question. If God could raise the dead by speaking to the dead, why couldn't he redeem you by talking redemption to you? Why does there have to be a bloody passion? Uh, the, the critics watching his program and the agnostics and the antagonists would say, God God is sadistic. Sadistic means God must love to kill and hurt things. He is possessed by this spirit of wanting to see blood. This is a strange God you guys worship. He is a bloodthirsty God. That's what they think about him. That's what I thought about him too because I, I didn't know the answer to the question why he had to die. I mean, why does the God of the universe have to deal with the death of a man to save men when he made the whole universe? What's wrong with his power? It's an important question. We can answer it today. You can be okay today. To answer this question, you got to write this on the notes, please. You got to talk about the birth of death. When was death born? First of all, God created man in his image to dominate earth as his agency. We know that. Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 says, Let us make man in our own image. God said, Let him have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and over all the earth. So God created man to dominate the earth as his agent. Genesis 1 26. Very clear. Number two, write this down, please. Death was not created by Satan. Mankind enjoyed perfect communion and relationship with God as both spiritual beings. Mankind had perfect communion with God in the garden. Matter of fact, Adam never went to a worship service. He never had to sing songs. He never had sacraments. Adam had no altar. He had no candles, he had no music, he had no tap, he didn't need none of this stuff we're doing. And the Bible says he walked and talked with God in the cool of the day in the garden. Perfect common union, the word is communion. He was alive unto God. I think it might be a temptation 
to believe that Satan created death. As a matter of fact, whenever we think of death in the Christian culture, we think of the devil. We think of death as if, you know, Satan created death. And we believe that therefore if Satan created death, then if we get rid of Satan, we'll get rid of death. That is not true and the concept is wrong. And if your theology is built on that, you will never appreciate why God had to die. Let's read in your Bible, who created death? Genesis chapter 2. Write this down in your notes, please. Death was created by God. Death is not a negative. God created death. <laughs> and God created death. But when he created death, write this down, he created death without life. <laughs> death had no life. That's why God never worried about death. Now he created it, but it had no life. Death was dead. Death was created dead. This is heavy stuff. Write this down, please. Death pre-existed Adam, but had no power over Adam. Death existed before Adam. God created death before he created man, but death had no life, and death was present when Adam was in the garden. Hallelujah. Now follow me carefully. Write this down, please. God introduced death to man and established the conditions and the limitations of the effects that death can have on man. God wasn't afraid of death and God wanted Adam to laugh at death. Matter of fact, here's a shocking truth. God created death, gave death to Adam, and gave Adam control over death. You got to hear me, otherwise you're going to miss Good Friday. I'm going to say it again. God created death, then he created Adam, then he gave death to Adam, and gave Adam complete control over death, and told Adam, you decide what happens to death. Whether it stays dead, or preach it to myself. You decide whether death comes alive or it stays dead. I am giving you complete power over death. Here is death, Adam. Let me prove this from scripture. Genesis chapter two, turn there please. Oh, I'm so excited about the power of God. I want you to read this in your own Bible. Genesis chapter 2. Look at what God says about death. And look at who he's talking to. There's no mystery in the Bible. Watch this. It says in verse 16, out loud, everybody read. And the Lord commanded the man and said, You are free to eat from any tree in the garden. But you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Why? For the day you eat of it, you will activate someone who's already present. <laughs> Adam did not invent death, created death. Satan did not invent death, created death. Death was always there, present but useless. God said, Adam, it's up to you. You can give it life or leave it dead.
There is no fear of death in me. I used to be afraid of death. And especially being brought up in the Bahamas. Where if you point at a graveyard and spit on your finger and let it dry. Don't you look so cute at me. If you ever cross the grave, they say your leg would rotten off. I mean, they, if you walk past a cemetery after midnight, there are going to be ghosts coming after you. I mean, I was so cultured to be afraid of death that I was afraid to go to funerals. Is there anybody else here like that? I am going today. I promise you, if you listen to me, I want you to listen carefully. If you listen to me, young man, young woman, if you listen to me, you will never be afraid of death again. Because death was created to be under your control. God gave Adam death and said, now you can decide whether it stays dead or it comes to life. It's up to you, he said. Watch this. God says, if you eat, if you eat, death can't do nothing if you don't eat. <laughs> now watch God. Death is present. Do you see it there? Yeah. God said, look, I introduced death to you. There's someone here called death. He says, if you eat this tree, from this tree, you can activate this guy who is here. Right now, he is hopeless, powerless, useless, ineffective but he's present and that's how death's supposed to be all the time present but useless oh i got something to talk to you about today write this down please death existed but had no power let's talk about death a little bit write this down Death existed inherent in creation. Please write it down. Try to understand it. Let me explain. Do you know that death is in everything? Everything that exists that has life has death built into it. <laughs> death is life in reverse. You cannot have life without the presence of death. Oh, I'm talking to myself. If a plant is alive, death is somewhere in that plant, but it is useless. That's why the plant is alive. God didn't have to create death separately. When God created life, death was life. <laughs> oh, I'm talking to myself. Listen, listen, let me put it another way. Please, please listen to me today. The devil is mad because I got him. I got him by the neck. Watch this. If you see a plant in the ground, there's a plant here. Thank God it's a live one. Praise God it's live. Hallelujah. Finally got a live one. Here's a live plant. This is live. Watch this. Watch this. I'm going to lift this plant up, eh? Do you see that? The plant's hanging on for dear life. What is it hanging on to? Soil. Why? That's where it came from. Wherever you came from, you got to stay attached to it. Now, where's the life? The life is in the plant. But the life will continue as long as the plant stays attached to where it came from. Now, watch this. If I pull this plant away from the soil, I don't have to kill it. The death is simply life in reverse and it is activated when you violate the principle of detachment. If you separate the resource from the source, you don't have to kill the resource. Because it's Adam. 
you and I are joined at the heart. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, death that is present can never kill you. It has no power. Oh, hallelujah. <sighs> Write this down, please. Death had no power over man. Now, here's the big problem. The submission and the obedience of man maintained the powerlessness of death. God says, if you do not eat from that tree, you will live eternally. But if you detach yourself from me, disobey my commands, you violate the attachment principle, you will, how? Surely die. Everybody say surely. Surely means, boy, listen, this surely is a deep word, you know. Surely means, ain't no guessing about this. Matter of fact, I am guaranteeing you that you're dead. Let's get a little deeper. I am going to make sure you die. Write this down, please. Man had the power over death. How? Through the obedience to God's word. The power that man had over death was keeping the commandment of God. That's what he do. Just keep the commandment and he had power over death. Death was present, but had no power. So this next statement is the bottom line. Death was weak in that it had no power over obedient man. The key to you living forever is obedience to the word of God again. <laughs> what did God give Adam to keep death dead? Can you tell me? His word. Does that make sense? God didn't give Adam no trick. He didn't give Adam no ceremony. Didn't give Adam any religion. He said, look, if you want to keep dead, death dead, just keep my word. Obey my word. Now, Adam messed up and disobeyed the word. I'm going ahead of myself, but I'm going to give it to you anyhow. If death came alive, when man disobeyed the word of God, then the only way for God to put death back to death is to give man the word again. In the beginning was the word, and the word was God, and the word was in God, and the word was made flesh. And he dwelt among us. And the word says, if you do what I say, you shall get your life back. You ought to shout hallelujah on a good Friday. You ought to praise him on a good Friday. See, that's why I can't take no chances. Now, I respect Buddha, but I can't take no chances with him. I respect Muhammad, I can't take no chances with him. I respect Baha'i la la la, but I can't take no chance with him. I respect Eli Selassie, but I can't take no chance with him. I respect Buddha boo boo boo, but I can't take no But this word that came in the flesh, Oh, hallelujah. It was the word that messed me up. It is the word that blessed me up. It was the breaking of the word that destroyed me. It was the submission to the word that restored me. You ought to give him praise that today he restored us. <laughs> hallelujah. Y'all might say, I'm going to preach a little bit before I go home today. Eh? This stuff is in my bones. Write this down, please. The activation of death. If death was created dead, who activated death? Write this down. Disobedience is called in the Hebrew language rebellion. Very important. The Hebrew word for disobedience 
is rebellion. The word in the Hebrew for rebellion, believe it or not, is the word sin. Sin is not, in the Hebrew language, sin is not stealing and cursing and lying and backbiting and adultery and fornication and, you know, killing. That's not sin in the Hebrew language. In the Hebrew culture, the context, the language, sin is simply rebellion against the known will of God. That is called sin. The things I listed are the results of rebellion. <laughs> Are you with me? Now I want you to watch this. What is oh disobedience? Say it out loud. What is disobedience? Rebellion. Everybody say it loud. Now don't miss it. This is the key to the whole plan. Watch this. What is disobedience? What is rebellion? Okay, can tie them together. So, man's disobedience to God's word. Which is what? Rebellion against God's command, which is called sin, activated the power of death. <laughs> Without sin, death has no power. It exists, but it has no power. Man's disobedience, therefore, to God's word, gave life to death. God says life, he says death is with you right now, Adam, but it has no life. But if you disobey my command, death will come alive and surely kill you. Hallelujah. Man's disobedience gave life to to death to kill man simple equation man's disobedience gave life to death to kill man so death killed man because man gave life to death to kill him boy you gotta really Think hard to listen to me today because here's a little warm. So please make sure you don't let the devil steal this message. <laughs> <laughs>